Christian practice at Christ the King is fully inclusive and all means all. So if you'd like to participate in this meal of God's free grace, please go ahead and grab a communion cup and we will use that during the service today. You can find the prayers uh, in the bulletin uh, that was in the rear of the sanctuary this morning, as well as the lyrics to a couple of the songs that we will be singing together as a community. You can also follow along with the service on the screen in the front today. At this time, I invite you to please stand as we begin our service. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. God comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. We sing together, Born in Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Al. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Please be seated. At this time, I want to invite Al's grandson, Trey Tafoya, to come forward for the eulogy for today's service. Can you hear me now? There we go. No matter how good I tried to look in a suit, Grandpa Al always looked better. You cannot deny that he knew how to dress with style and class. From the tailor fit suits to the gold cufflinks and the shoes shined so well you could see your face in the reflection, Grandpa knew how to show up for an event. Dear friends and family, Pastor Joel, in a time when it is so difficult to gather together. Sandy, Jody, Kara, Aaron, I, and our families, thank you all for being here today. Al Schlager taught us what a boy from a farm in the middle of Nebraska could accomplish. With hard work, dedication, patience, and honesty, anything is possible. Growing up on a farm was not an easy task. There was never any time to play games or sports. When school was over, you came home to do your chores and get to work. From an early age, he understood responsibility, responsibility to your family and to yourself. He always valued people who worked hard and made an honest living. I can recall a time when we had a family gathering and one of us grandkids couldn't make it because we had work. His response to that was, well, someone's got to work. Somebody has got to work. If there was a job to be done, someone had to do it, and it had to be done right. Honest, hard work. He learned this from his parents, and he taught it to his kids and grandkids, something we strive to emulate every day. Now, this is not to say that he did not have a childhood. He was and always will be a cowboy. As a boy, he had his own horse that he named Tony after Tony the Wonder Horse which was the companion of Western film actor Tom Mix. Oh, Grandpa loved to be a cowboy, from riding horses to shooting guns, hunting, fishing, camping, and always donning a pair of finely shined boots and a leather vest, he was a cowboy. He was also a cowboy who liked to collect coins, pennies in particular. In fact, when he and our grandmother prepared to move to Denver at just the age of 18, his mother helped him pack and she packed his penny collection. This lets you know how young he truly was at that time. But he had responsibilities. There was a job that needed to be done, and he was the one to do it. So they packed their things, pennies and all, and moved to Denver, the big city. Even though he never lived on a farm again, he never forgot where he came from. In his backyard, he had an apple tree, a grapevine, and the famous plums that would produce buckets worth of fruit annually to be distributed to friends and family. When encountered with problems, problems, he utilized Old West solutions. When he noticed some critter was eating his grapes, he first tried the city method by setting a trap. After catching a skunk and he called animal control and they said they wouldn't come out for a skunk, he asked, could I just shoot it? They said, no, sir, you cannot discharge a firearm within city limits. And he said, I'm gonna just shoot it. And then he promptly shot the skunk. Old West solutions to modern problems. Al Schlager always looked out for other people because simply it was the right thing to do. As a young man working, there was a series of layoffs at the job he had. While he was not on that list, he gave up his job to another man with younger children. It was the right thing to do. For him, things were either right or wrong. There was no gray area. He expected other people to do that which is right. In one of his very first jobs at Gates Rubber Company, the bell rang for lunch. He went to the sink to wash up, clean his hands before eating. 
And when he came back, the foreman had told him he took too long and it was time to get back to work. No lunch for you. Realizing the absurdity of this request and probably the violation of modern labor laws, he politely quit and walked out that day. He expected them to treat employees the right way. And when they didn't, he held them accountable. In another instance, he encountered a couple who asked for some money to ride the bus. He generously gave it to him, always thinking the best in people. But he said that they must use it for what they said they would use it for, the bus and nothing else. Moments later, when he saw them try to buy some alcohol, he walked up, demanded the money back, which he got. He expected honesty and integrity from everyone that he encountered. And when he didn't get it, he stood up for himself. He stood up for others, his family, and he defended everyone. He taught us what it means to be a wonderful father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. He let us each follow our own paths with support and encouragement, but never steered. Perhaps most important, he taught us what it means to be a good husband. Every day of his 70 years of marriage, he loved Helen unconditionally. He adored her with all his heart. It is no secret to you all that knew her that Grandma Helen was the star of the family. She always stole the show, but he let her be the star. To him, there was nobody more perfect in this world than his beloved Helen. The final years of their lives together are perhaps the most profound as it relates to the quality of his character. When Grandma was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, Grandpa took care of her in every way that a loving husband could. He got her out of bed, he bathed her, he dressed her, he made her meals. He wasn't always perfect. My mom once went over there to check in and she found two large Costco-sized cans of tomato paste and some pasta and asked, well, dad, what are you gonna do with that? And he said, I'm making spaghetti. Is this not what you need? You need a little bit more than just tomato paste. It didn't matter if he didn't know how to do it. He would figure it out and do his best for her because there was nobody else in the world that he loved more. On the day she died, Pastor Joel said a prayer and Grandpa walked up to her and he placed his hand on hers and he said, she's cold. I need to keep her warm and he drew a blanket. Even after death, he looked after her. After we lost grandma, he showed us what it meant to remain strong, but we knew that he missed her every day. We can find comfort in our mourning that they are both holding hands again in a warm embrace. Reflecting on time, this feels different. Measuring a minute, trivial when passing, until it all stands still, frozen, like a feather on a lake. But time hasn't stopped, it's accelerated, a week feels longer, and I miss you already. Memories made, many, fishing adventures, weed pulling, 10 cents a weed, conversations, a quiet strength, kindness, everlasting love, reassuring resilience, near perfect.
great grandbabies on a knee, <clears throat> the squeeze of your hand, a comb through your hair like a feather on a lake. You taught me trust in myself and in the seasons. I trust that the sun will rise. Coyotes will greet the moon at night. Creeks will babble and on eagle's wings, lovers will be reunited like a feather on a lake. You are kind, you are nice, I'll always have you in my heart. You are strong, you are brave. I wish you were still here, but you'll always be with me. And I hope whoever is listening will be with you too. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Trey, Aaron, Walter, beautiful, touching words. Incredible tribute to your grandfather and your grandpa great. Walter, I'm not sure I'll ever hear those words from Matthew the same way again. <laughs> oh. 72 years side by side, your family wrote in the obituary. We have a visual to guide us with those 72 years side by side today. It's not very often that we have a chance for lovers to be reunited, even in the midst of an altar, together in one place, symbolizing the union of love. We oftentimes look for signs such as this to give us comfort in the midst of our grief and our sorrow visuals that help us know that everything will be okay. I shared with Jody a moment on the phone the morning that Al passed, remembering back a couple years when Helen died. It was a couple hours after being at the house. Walter had come over to my family's house to spend some time with Sam, and we were looking out the window that night and it was an incredible, beautiful sunset. A moment of recognition that Helen was embraced in love. But that sunset receded and it went to darkness. But yet that morning when Jody called, it was early. I think it was a little a hair before 6 a.m. that Jody had uh, sent me the first text. And I was driving here to Christ the King on that Sunday morning. And as I was driving from the west to the east, up in the sky was a brilliant sunrise. Oranges and pinks glowing, offering perhaps that same sign. As we were getting ready for this service, Al's family chose Born in Cry as the song that we sang together at the beginning. And sometimes words in subtle ways tie these images and visuals together for us. I encourage you, if you have your lyric sheet, pull it out for a second and look at these words. In the fourth verse, if you find someone to share your time and join your hearts as one, I'll be there to make your verses rhyme. 
from dusk till rising sun. From dusk to rising sun. We see those images, we see those signs, and we entrust both Helen and Al into the loving arms of God, trusting in their embrace that all is well and all is good. But I want to take a moment to talk about that time period between the dusk to the rising sun and that darkness that exists in between those two periods of time. Because for all of us gathered here today, for many different reasons, we know that darkness of grief and loss. We know those moments in between the dusk to the rising sun and the difficulties of those emotions that come with them. And we recognize that Al, he knew that darkness as well. The difficulty of having said goodbye to Helen, not just when she died, but in the years leading up to her death as she walked through that journey of Alzheimer's. I would sit with Al when I would come over to visit with them together, and he would share stories, memories from his life, of his work. We walked out with those plum trees in the back, and he would hand me plum after plum as he talked and shared. But he would look over to Helen and he'd say, don't, don't you remember that, Helen? And she'd smile and she'd nod. And then Al would look back to me with a little bit of that darkness and grief already in his eyes. I think that grief carried on for him between the dusk to this sunrise. These last couple of years were hard. He was strong. He kept Helen close by on the mantle, but you could see in his being the burden that that grief and loss bore on his souls. It was a heavy burden to carry. Perhaps today, as we gather in the midst of celebrating our faith, we can recognize that sometimes death itself can be a blessing. That as Al is entrusted to Jesus in the waters of his baptism, as Al is entrusted to the everlasting love of God, that that burden that he's carried with that grief no longer rests on his shoulders. That God comes to offer peace for a weary soul and offer grace for someone who worked so hard to care and love for someone who he cared for. Today, we look for solace in that promise that Al is now at rest, at peace, relieved of that burden that he carried. Whether it's in the sunrise or the image of being side by side again, We celebrate today that our burdens of grief also don't have to be heavy that we carry them on our own. Because today, these words, this moment, this service, this time together, that may be enough to be your sunrise, to say, I am at peace in this moment. But for many of us, for Al's family, it may still feel a little bit dark. It may not feel like that sunrise has yet come. I want to recognize today those same words that Jesus offers to us. That in the midst of the burdens that we have on our hearts, God's peace and love and grace comes to offer us rest for our weary souls. Because for your family that walked with both Al and Helen through these most difficult years, I'm sure that both of them 
looking upon us today would say, well done. You cared for us. You walked with us. You supported us through our difficult moments. And we are so thankful to have a family that cared, that loved us. And let me offer my pastoral words to say, well done. The journey of Alzheimer's, the journey of walking through grief and change and transition with a parent or grandparent is not easy. But you all have done well. And I pray today, tomorrow, and these weeks or months to come, you may know that rest for weary souls. You may know the peace and grace that God wants you to know in this time. And for all of us, as a community of faith, as neighbors, as people who loved Al in our lives and who will continue to walk alongside his family and one another, we are the ones that get to help lighten those loads. We get to be the presence of God's love and light, releasing burdens, coming alongside and offering hugs and support and encouragement saying those same words to one another, well done, well done. So I pray in this time that you will spend after this service, eating a meal in a reception, gathering and spending time together as family and friends in the days and weeks to come, that you will participate in that same work of relieving burdens and offering rest for weary souls because I know that that's what Al did day after day, trying to carry the burdens and release the weight from others. We follow that example today. May God's peace and grace be with each of you. Amen. I was standing by my window on a cold and cloudy day when I saw the hearse come rolling for it to carry a father away. Will the circle?
Let us confess together the communal faith of the church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you created the cosmos to exist in intimate relationship with you. Because humanity missed the mark, you sent your son to bring reconciliation to all. May we, your church, be instruments of hope, healing, and peace within this broken world. Hear us, Lord. Through the resurrection of Jesus, you reveal to us your never-failing power to bring new life into every situation and circumstance. Grant us faith in the certain promise of the resurrection, not only for when we die, but when we face any form of darkness, fear, or uncertainty in this world. Hear us, Lord. Guide our journey in this life, filling us with your Holy Spirit, so that we may become the people and the community that you created us to be. Hear us, Lord. Forgive our selfish nature and devotion to things that drain us of hope and peace. Turn us to rely fully on your promise to provide for us and sustain us in all our needs. Hear us, Lord. Hold and embrace all who mourn with the power of your loving care, that casting all our sorrow on you, we may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give us courage and faith as we grieve that we may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those we love. Hear us, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to trust and participate in the community of faith, which knits us together as one people, carrying each other's burdens and looking forward to the day when tears will be wiped from every cheek. Hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Al to your never-failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for all people. Hear us, Lord. God of grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. If you're online with us today, I invite you to have a form of bread and a form of drink available that we will bless as part of our communion liturgy. And if you're here in person, I invite you to have your communion cups with you as we celebrate this meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great as the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. We remember that in the night before he showed us the full extent of his love, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With Al and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. This, this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. With whatever elements are before you this day, because God loves you just as you are, with whatever you've done or left undone, and in spite of anything that the world says about you, all are welcome to receive these gifts from God's table today. For in Christ, all means all, and the gifts of God are free. Today, we will celebrate Holy Communion as one body at the same time. I will offer the words for you, for everyone who is online and here present in the sanctuary today. I invite you to prepare your wafer by revealing the first layer, and then you can take off the second layer of your communion cup to reveal the grape juice. Let us now receive this great meal of unconditional love, the bread of heaven and the cup of grace. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. For all who are in person, there are baskets along the center aisle of your pews. I invite you to pass those baskets down your aisles, and you can place the communion cups in those baskets. And I invite you now to hear a blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We'll sing together just a closer walk with thee. Thank you. 
Kara, thank you for offering your gifts as part of the service today as well. A couple announcements on behalf of Al's family. Uh, the family invites you all to come to a lunch reception after this service. You can exit the back of the sanctuary and come around to the fellowship hall where there will be food and uh, tables to sit at. Uh, we invite you to keep your masks on on your way down and while you're getting your food, and then you can take your masks off as you're sitting around your tables eating together. You'll be able to greet Al's family down in the fellowship hall after the service today. The family also uh, acknowledges that if you'd like to make memorial gifts in Al's honor, you can do so to the Christ the King Lutheran Church Memorial Fund. There are envelopes on the table outside in the narthex where you can leave those gifts, or you can also make those gifts online on our website at ctkdenver.org. There's also a guest book that if you did not sign on the way in, we encourage you to sign that guest book on your way to the reception or as you leave today. And again, on behalf of the family, thank you for being here as part of the service today. I invite you to please stand now for the commendation. Actually, one final announcement. At the end of the service, we will run the slideshow again that showed at the beginning of the service. You can remain in the sanctuary to see that slideshow one last time if you'd like to do so. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Albert Al Schlager. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. You may remain seated if you'd like to watch the slideshow, and we'll allow uh, Al's family to process out. <laughs>